I never will forget the time that the Lord pulled me out of my body and I was praying and praying and praying and I was trying to get God for three years I prayed and I tried to get God, no, five years on this one I prayed and I tried to get God to remove all those 42 growths that come up on my daughter's body and been on her five years. And after five years of praying, I found out that my praying was not getting the job done. The longer I prayed, the bigger the growths got. So I just thought, well, I'm going to have to change. God's not going to change. So I don't know how to change. I, I mean, I just know so much, I don't know how to change. I was praying a, a, a ordinary, full gospel, Pentecostal, charismatic type prayer for healing, you know. And so I just went ahead and prayed that way. And then I began to pray sincerely, and I said, God, I want to know the truth. Jesus, I want to know the truth. Why are these ghosts on my daughter's body and I can't get you to make them leave? Jesus, I want to know the truth. And so after, after I prayed like that, you know, after I did that, you know, for, I don't know, for several weeks, I told God, those that are hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Those that diligently seek God, they shall find. In other words, those that diligently seek the truth, they shall find the truth. Well, I didn't, my knowledge wasn't great enough. I couldn't find the truth. I didn't know why God would remove the ghost from my daughter's body. I was doing my best in little Christian life. I wasn't the best Christian in the world, but I was doing the best I can. That's all you can do is just kind of do the best you can, you know. And so after I got sincere with God and I began to seek God in truth, I want these gross removed off of my daughter's body that have been in there for five years. I mean, you don't want your daughter running around your house with 42 gross on her. And the longer you pray, the bigger they get. After a while, it gets you to the point you don't think you know very much about faith. And I thought I knew a little bit about faith. I knew I wasn't going to have perfect faith, but I thought, sure, I know a little bit about faith. And then, uh, after seeking God for the truth, and I told God, I said, God, I want to know the truth. Jesus, I want to know the truth. For two or three weeks, still didn't come. Then I began to beat the floor with my fist. I said, God, I have a right to know the truth. I'm your son and I belong to you. Jesus, I have a right to know the truth. Jesus, I have a right to know the truth. Heaven has the truth and I want it. Jesus, I want to know the truth. And I just kept on boldly. The bolder you get, the better God likes it. Amen. And he likes you to speak your words loud and clear so he can hear you. <laughs> Always remember, everything about God that you're ashamed to speak loud and clear, he won't give it to you. God does not honor silent faith. God honors faith with action. Faith must have action. And faith must have a voice. Believing totally and trusting. But your faith has to have a voice. I tell you, God has a voice. And when he pulled me up, I was seeking God. I mean, I was diligently seeking God. The Bible says, those that diligently seek God, they shall find God. And I diligently sought God. I diligently sought God for my own daughter. I didn't have any gross. I've been confessing for years and years and years and years. Like most every day. That the healing power of God is flowing through my body. Lord, your divine healing power is flowing through my body. And it's flowing through there right now. And it's driving out any kind of affliction. And Lord, your healing power is flowing through me to keep every member of my body strong and every member of my body functioning normal in Jesus' name. And if I start detecting some part of my body <coughs> that's trying to get a little weak, I zero in on that part. I say, no you don't, 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 no you don't. It's going on the time. 
Then you believe God by faith. And it begins to function normal, totally normal. You have to let God and the devil both know where you stand. You have to show the devil that you have faith. He'll test your faith to the hilt. And you better know that. He'll just test it. And uh, all of a sudden, one Sunday night, coming in from service, it's like you have a Sunday night service here, I went home. And my daughter was in the den. She's about 16 years old. The boy she's married to now named Bobby, he was dating her at that time. Bring her home from church. And then come to the house and sit. She was 16. I didn't think she ought to go out in cars at 16 years old, except at 1 o'clock in the morning. But he came to the house two years in a row. For two years, and got her, took her to church. They'd come back. And uh, so they were sitting on the couch. And I'm just walking across the living room, just minding my own business. I'm just a human being. I've just been seeking God for the truth. I was walking across like this. And all of a sudden, I took a step. And it was like stepping into a white cloud. It was like stepping into another world. And all of a sudden, just so sweet and so gentle, my natural senses began to be suspended from me. And all of a sudden, it's like Paul 14 years ago. All of a sudden, there I was in paradise. All of a sudden, there I was somewhere in heaven where God was. I didn't get to see Jesus. I was just there. My natural senses were suspended, and I was in another world. And But his voice, but he talked to me. And I was so scared for being there. I was so scared. It was so holy and so clean. I couldn't understand it. I was scared. And a voice, a male voice, began to talk to me. And the male voice said to me, How long are you going to put up with those growths on your daughter's body, loud and clear. And I went, uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, can you imagine praying for something for five years, and then somebody comes along and asks you how long you're going to put up with them? And that shows you about how much I know. I don't know God. Oh, 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 Jesus, what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't have them. They're, they're not on me, Jesus. And I was just a trembling. I, I couldn't hardly talk to him. I said, they're not on me. They're on me. I, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? He said, you're the head of your house. And I asked him, what do you mean? And they were not on me. And I started making excuses. He got mad at me. Now listen to me closely. If you can't receive your healing, God's mad at your faith. You understand that? He loves you though. He loves you though. But he's mad at your faith and mad at your mouth. Get that straight. If you're not receiving from heaven after the price that Jesus paid, God's mad at your faith and mad at your mouth. He told me, he said, you're the head of your house. What are you putting up with those ghosts in your house for? They're not from heaven. I said, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. I never heard anybody tell me before I was the head of my house. 
But I know it was supposed to be. But when you said that to me, I saw it. I saw it. But I don't supposed to let the devil come on my property. And if I even let the devil come on my property anywhere or in any room in my house, uh, it's because I don't rise up in Jesus' name and cast him out. Why don't you rise up in Jesus' name and run the devil off? Why don't you rise up in Jesus' name and run cancer out of your body? What do you mean run cancer out of my body? Just what I said. Why don't you run cancer out of your body? Why don't you run that bad blood out of your body? Run it out. How you do that? You put heaven's pressure upon the devil. It's amazing how we Christians can think that we have a lot of knowledge of God, but then when we come in God's holy, clean presence and he begins to talk to you with a voice, you'll find out that you're not quite as spiritual as you thought you were. Oh, tell me about it. In fact, you'll find out after you tremble and shake for a while, you'll begin to wonder how you ever found the church for 20 years. <laughs> and it's the most simple thing in the world for you to be healed. And he'll reach out to them. And you'll right, reach out to them with compassion and boldness to try to get the truth over to you. And so I said, Lord, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I'm back in my house. I don't know what you mean. And then the voice. I'm standing there. I don't see anything. The only thing I know is that I'm in another world. I'm not in this world. That's all I know. I'm somewhere in another world where nothing except truth reigns. That's all I do. I was somewhere, like Paul said, there was a fellow 14 years ago, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there I was in paradise. The only thing I knew that I was in some kind of paradise <coughs> where truth reigned totally. Defeat couldn't stay there. Truth reigned totally. And I was shook. And I was scared even being there. I thought I was pretty strong spiritually until I got in a face to face with God and I found out I wasn't quite as strong as I thought I was. I thought my knowledge of God was pretty good until I got in paradise with him and he started talking to me. And then it was so simple. It was so simple. But his version of the gospel was a little bit different than any church I ever heard. I said, any church I ever heard. I wasn't raised that way. Uh, the voice of God said to me, the voice, the voice, the voice. Like the voice that spoke to Peter when he was praying on the housetop. A voice came down from heaven to him three times. A vision came down three times and spoke to him. Like the voice spoke to John on the Isle of Patmos. Same voice. Voice of truth that knows everything and knows how to do everything. Blessed be God forever. And God said to me, this is plain. I mean, this is, he said to me, if you will. Now, I always remember that. The height of success is for you in every area of your life if you will do a certain thing and if you will say a certain thing. God paid the price gave his only son and Jesus paid the price that you could have the abundant life. There is total success in every area of your life if you will believe a certain way and if you will talk a certain way. It's there for you. It's already been paid for. It's called the abundant life. He said to me, if you will curse the roots of those growths on your daughter's body and you will curse them in my name, they will die and disappear if you will believe and not doubt. Didn't even mention my child's faith. Didn't even mention her faith at all. And I said, well, don't you say that right. He said, they will die like the fig tree died when I cursed it. If you will believe and not doubt. And I began to descend down from where I was at to the earth again with a voice ringing inside of me 
If you will believe and not doubt. 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 And I came back into my body in my living room and my body was standing there like this fixing to take a step. Like I left it and it was shaking and was weeping and I had no problem of believing anything until I began to slip back into my body and my natural senses began to come to me. Now when my natural senses began to come to me, listen closely to understand the whole thing, when my natural senses began to be restored to me slowly, and I came out of the trance that I'd been swept into by God's power, I heard a voice out here on the outside of my body talking to my mind, saying, real nice voice. It's a real nice voice. Uh, the devil has a way to make you think it's God. But he is a freak. <laughs> if you accept any kind of voices, you're going to get in trouble. Don't accept nothing except victory. Don't accept nothing except victory. Amen. Boldly accept nothing except victory. Yeah. Don't accept it. Don't receive it. Don't talk anything except victory. And the louder you talk it and the stronger you talk it, the better God likes it. I said the louder you talk it, the stronger you talk it, the better God likes it. But this voice said to me, uh, don't, don't go in there and pray for your daughter now because her boyfriend's in there and, and they won't, and, and you'll embarrass her and remember how much you love your daughter. Oh, you love your daughter so much and you don't want to embarrass her because she's in her with a boyfriend and you just kept on and on and on and yang, 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 Telling me all kind of natural things, trying to reason natural things out to me. And I said, oh, shut up. I'm going in there right now. Yeah. I don't care nothing about boyfriends. I don't care anything about anything. I don't care anything about embarrassments, nothing. I'm going out right now and I'm going to crush this thing. Oh, please don't go in there now. Don't go in there. Please don't go in there. You, you, you don't get embarrassed. Oh, don't go, don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. If he can talk to you down from just a shade of total victory every day in your life, you'll die. One shade of doubt entering in cuts God off from victory for you. God does not work through doubt. He works through faith. And God warned me, you better not doubt, son. You better not doubt. Boy, I, I mean, I, I refuse to doubt. I said, no, I'm going out right now. And the devil began to beg me and plead with me. He was begging me and pleading with me. Oh, no, you know how much you love it. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. I said, when you just get back from heaven, the devil is afraid of you. <laughs> or if you ever accept, you don't have to go to heaven. If you ever accept the truth that's in God's word, the devil fears and trembles because he has no power over his word. Or to the word of God. He has no power over the word of God. And I walked in there like a wild man. <coughs> now listen to me closely you'll learn the truth tonight. You don't have to fool around and flounder around with a bunch of junk the rest of your life. I walked in there like a wild man. If you don't approach cancer like a wild man, you'll die. It will kill you. Romans 4, 17 says, Call those things that do not as though they were. And I also know what God told me. So I walked in the room where my daughter was at, and I just walked in and I said, Zona, Jesus told me if I curse the roots of those gross in his name, they would die and disappear. Do you understand that? Her, bo her boyfriend was sitting there, you know, goggle-eyed. <laughs> hmm. 
When you're 60 years old, you're always a dog alive and your heart's beating fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lord told me to find cousin that would die and disappear. She said, Daddy, what's wrong with you? Daddy, what's wrong with you? Daddy, what's wrong with you? I just got back from heaven. And for 40 days and 40 nights, I believed him. I cursed him in Jesus' name. I believed him 40 days and 40 nights. I walked through my house and said, You can't stay on my daughter's body. Gross! You're an invader into my house. You ugly looking knots on my daughter's body. You don't supposed to be on there. You're a, you're a total invader. My name is Norval Hayes and I own this house. You dummy, what are you doing on my daughter's body? You have no right to be on Zona's body. You're a thief and you're crazy. You can't stay on her body. She belongs to me and I own this house and I own this property and you're not going to stay on my daughter's body. Amen. And I kept on. Just that wild. You have to get wild if you want God to do anything for you. Amen. And I mean, I did. I just thanked God for it and praised God for it and I'd give God the glory for it. In fact, after about two or three weeks, I thanked God so many thousands of times, I started singing it. Didn't I, Zona? She's watching tonight in her home. I started singing it. Didn't I, Zona? And she says, Daddy, you're about to drive me nuts. That's all you say. You're about to drive me nuts, Daddy. You're about to drive me nuts. See, these gross and everything's still on here, Daddy. You're about to drive me nuts. I looked at him and said, Thank you, Lord, for removing them from my daughter. She's my daughter in my house. They can't stay on you. In Jesus' name, thank you for removing them. And she said, oh, brother, daddy, you're impossible. <laughs> so I get in my room. I get in my room at nighttime late, and I got to start singing. Thank you, Jesus, for removing the gross from my daughter's body. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for removing the gross from my daughter's body. Sing every day, Carol. Carol, are you listening to me? Sing every day. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a new hip. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a strong hip. And just sing it. Make, make a song out of it. Glory to God. Sing it to yourself. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a new hip. Don't feel sorry for yourself, honey. You're too pretty for that. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a new hip. And just do it all the time, all the time. I do it, I, I do it you know, late at night. I could hear Zona's bedroom across the hall from mine. Couldn't I, Zona? Uh, she said, Oh, my daddy is flipping out. <laughs> I say, Thank you, Jesus, for removing the gross from my daughter's body. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle. Oh, Jesus, you're just so wonderful to us, Lord. You love me and Zona so much. You come in our house a lot of times and just bless us. Jesus, you're our special guest in our house. It's wonderful to have you in our house, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for removing the gross from my daughter's body. And she'll say, my daddy is flipping out. Oh, oh my daddy is going nuts. My daddy is flipping out. Then when I heard her saying, my daddy is flipping out, I'd say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> At that time of her life, little Zona did not get healed through her faith. <laughs> now she's got faith now. She prayed for her dog here a while back and God healed it. <laughs> she's got faith now, but... At that, time, at that time in her life, she did not get healed. And I mean, I did it for 40 days and 40 nights, and all of a sudden, one afternoon, she came in from school, uh, hanging up dresses, and all of a sudden, like a whirlwind, just all of a sudden, just whoosh, whoosh, passed over her body, and it melted all the gross off of her, every one of them that quick, not only melted them off of her, 
it created and gave her a brand new skin all over her. She came running down the hallway, sound like a dresser or something turned over in her room. She ran against the wall. I tell you, when God shows up, he might run against the wall. Especially if you've been serving a God that you don't know if he's a miracle working God or not. And you've just been going to church, you know, and singing songs and being nice. When God comes and performs a miracle for you, you go, Ow! Oh! skill. That's what she did. She ran against the wall, ran down the hallway, holding her hands out like this, and, Daddy, Daddy, this scares me. This is spooky, Daddy. Spooky. This scares me. Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! Excuse me. Look at my hands. Look at me, Daddy. Look at my body. Look at my body. I have a new body. I have new hands. Look at me, Daddy. All over my legs. Look at me. Look at me, Daddy. Look at me. I got new skin. Look at me. I knew it was going to happen in the when because the Lord told me in heaven it happened. The Lord told me in heaven. He told me what happened if I'd believe it, not doubt. And I refused to doubt. I mean, I refused to doubt. Did you ever stop and think it takes just as much effort to doubt God as it does to believe God? Why don't we human beings turn our faith loose on what God says, turn our mouth loose on what God says, and just step out boldly, just step out ruthlessly, and, and, and trust him and believe him. I don't care what he says. Believe it. 